Canadians are heading to the polls today. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's decision to call a snap election several weeks ago could backfire. He's facing a significant challenge from Conservative Erin O'Toole. Now, Trudeau is hoping to use his handling of the pandemic and COVID-19 vaccine rollout to help him win. But many see his move as opportunistic, given that Canada is now in a fourth wave of COVID infections. Paula Newton joining us live from Montreal. Um, what's the mood across the country as people go out to vote today? It's cranky, Becky. I'm not going to lie. Look, it is a beautiful day, one of the last days of summer here. Canadians were just trying to get a breather from this pandemic. As you mentioned, this is a fourth wave. And, and while it may not be as bruising here as it is in the West Coast, you have to think in the West Coast, medical professionals are asking that the army be called in in Alberta. In that context, Justin Trudeau looked at the polls and thought, huh, I could actually perhaps here take control of Parliament in Canada, something he does not have right now. And he called an election. Lightning fast, this election lasted only five weeks. But this has really turned into quite a gamble from Justin Trudeau. And in the end, there's still the possibility he could lose his job. Take a listen. In the last lingering days of summer, a snap election seemed a rude intrusion for so many Canadians. It's the middle of a pandemic, not even two years since the last one, and it was tough to dodge, especially this campaign. It was ugly. This, the token moment. <laughs> Protesters, many of them opposing vaccines, threw gravel at Justin Trudeau and stalked his campaign. His rivals have hit him rhetorically, calling him selfish, for calling the snap election in mid-August, trying to capitalize on good poll numbers to secure a majority in Parliament. At first, those favorable polls collapsed for Trudeau. For a few weeks, he even trailed the main rival, Conservative Party leader Aaron O'Toole, who accused him of attempting a power grab. We're actually in the middle of an unnecessary $600 million pandemic election called by Mr. Trudeau for no other reason than himself. This event will no longer be taking place here today. But the angry, loud, anti-vaccine chants of Canada's People's Party energized the Trudeau campaign and put the pandemic squarely in voter sights. We're going to trust science. We're going to trust the experts. We're going to make sure that anyone on a plane or train is vaccinated. Here in Shefford, Quebec, an hour from Montreal, it's a district or riding that has voted for three different parties in the last decade. Organic farmer Isabel Hover was looking on with sheer exhaustion. She, like so many Canadians, wanted to hear more about enduring issues like climate change. I won't be going on, oh, what, this little event on the right or this little event on the, on the left, you know, that bothered me or that made a big thing on the news, you know. That's not really the, to me, that's not the, 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 the big picture of it. But time and again, the election pivoted back to the pandemic in divisive ways. The local New Democratic Party candidate says the People's Party imported a brand of disinformation. And not believing in, in truths, uh, sorry to say that uh, Trump didn't help in, uh, on that issue. A short drive away, the People's Party candidate is pressing her points to voters. And she says they're listening. Because we give them freedom of choice. We, we believe in, in, in a choice as opposed to forced vaccination. This is still a tight race, with Trudeau favoured to win, but perhaps with no more political power than he started with. The campaign may not change Canada's leader or even its parliament, but it has already left its mark on the very character of politics here. Yeah, it sure has here, Becky. In a lot of ways, people did not expect. Uh, I will talk to you again about turnout. Remember, this is a pandemic campaign. There are already line, long lineups at some polling stations across this country. Got to keep the social distancing, fewer workers at the polls. It's going to be an interesting day and night here. Yeah, and I'm just interested to, to, to pursue this idea that there are now concerns this election could bring about more polarization. I mean, uh, the, the, the charges are that, that Trudeau has brought this on, on himself. Just, just let's just, um, just focus for a moment on this idea of more polarization. How might, how might that manifest itself and how damaging might that be at this point? 
we could end up with quite a scramble. Remember, this is a parliamentary system. There are no less than six federal parties mm. running. Right now, the Trudeau government is propped up, if you will, by the NDP, the New Democratic uh, Party, and their leader, Jagmeet Singh. That could still be the way it turns out tonight. But if there is not one party that can effectively form a minority government, you might be able to cobble together a government, but it is still a big risk. In the middle of all that, Becky, put this pandemic, which has really shone a light and, and taken really the veneer off any kind of unity in this country, with people mm. especially polarizing around the issue of the pandemic. And it has been something that has been startling to Canadians uh, in a way that many did not want to hear. Again, more rhetoric, and you saw even though it was token, mm. that was being token gravel, no one was hurt in that event, certainly different for Canada mm. and, and something many people will keep an eye on. Yeah, Paula Newton, always a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed.